So for the main topic for foreplay here, we do have an article and I actually pulled this from Kotaku and this is going to be the major talking point here. Microsoft finally closes the massive Activision Blizzard deal, making Call of Duty officially part of Xbox now. So 21 months after it was announced, the $69 billion deal is finally <laughs> complete. So the video game industry just got a lot smaller. The long and winding saga of Microsoft's $69 billion purchase of Activision Blizzard has finally come to a close with the companies announcing the complete completed merger today following one last green light from regulators in the UK. Call of Duty is now part of Xbox and the tech giant has now surpassed Sony as the second biggest gaming company in the world. Uh, as gaming's big march toward corporate Cons consolidation continues. In addition to the blockbuster military shooter, Activision Blizzard produces Overwatch 2, Diablo 4, and World of Warcraft. The acquisition will provide a raft of big games for Microsoft's growing Xbox Game Pass subscription service, as well as make it a massive player on mobile with some of the biggest smartphone games in the world in Candy Crush and Call of Duty Mobile. Microsoft signed a 10-year deal to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation, but as uh, reserve the right to make other Activision Blizzard franchises exclusive to its Xbox platforms going forward. Uh, the deal will also effectively expand Microsoft's gaming business by roughly 10,000 employees. It's not yet clear how many of them will remain, either due to redundancy layoffs or attrition of senior talent and executive level staff. Activision Blizzard CEO uh, Bobby Kotick wrote in an email to staff today that he will stay on the, at the company reporting to Microsoft Game CEO Phil Spencer through the end of 2023. Microsoft agreed to union neutrality with the Communication Workers of America last year, and starting 60 days from now, Activision Blizzard employees will be able to get recognition of a union with majority support through a simple card check. Prior to joining Microsoft, the company had fought unionization efforts and received a number of labor complaints filed with the National Labor Relations Board. Microsoft and Activision oh. Blizzard first announced the groundbreaking merger back in January of 2022. Filings with the Securities and Exchange Commission revealed that Spencer approached uh, Kotick about the deal after the publisher's stock price collapsed following major game delays and continued reports of past sexual harassment and misconduct by some of its employees. A July the 20th, 2021 lawsuit by the California Civil Rights Department alleged widespread sexual harassment and discrimination within Activision Blizzard. Then a bombshell Wall Street Journal report on November the 17th of 21 claimed that Kotick was aware of multiple past sexual misconduct lawsuits against the company, but failed to report them to its board of directors. Activision has called the report misleading and is currently fighting the Civil Rights Department. Civil Rights Department's lawsuit in court. However, a day after the Wall Street Journal's report was published, Spencer emailed staff within Microsoft that he was evaluating all aspects of Xbox's relationship with Activision Blizzard. The next day, he approached Kotick about buying the embattled company. Those talks eventually culminated into a deal to buy Call, the Call of Duty publisher for a $95 a share, 45% premium over what the company was worth following the sexual misconduct reports and game production delays. Wall Street Journal and Bloomberg both reported at the time that Kotick was expected to resign after the deal closed, allowing him a graceful exit from the company he spent 30 years leading, while the California lawsuit is still ongoing. Kotick also stands to make nearly $400 million from the sale via his stock holdings, over 20 times the $18 million settlement Activision Blizzard paid to the Equal Employment and Opportunity Commission over sexual discrimination allegations last year. Microsoft and Activision Blizzard had originally planned to close the deal by last July, but battles with regulators in the UK and US almost killed it off. The Federal Trade Commission attempted to block the merger in federal court over the summer, leading to a week-long trial that ended up revealing an unprecedented amount of behind-the-scenes info about Xbox, Sony, and other gaming companies, including leaked plans for upcoming consoles and private emails between top brass. The FTC's legal case ultimately failed, however, paving the way for Microsoft to address remaining reservations with the UK's um, 
Competition and Markets Authority. As part of a reworked plan to win approval, Microsoft agreed to sell cloud gaming rights for Activision Blizzard games in the UK to Assassin's Creed publisher Ubisoft, uh, preventing it from being able to withhold streaming licenses for its hits like Call of Duty and Overwatch from competitors like Sony. While Microsoft ultimately prevailed with regulators, the unexpected level of scrutiny resulted in a number of compromises and an unusual level of transparency that both companies may not have been counting on when the deal was first announced. So before we go further with this, we are going to list here every franchise that Microsoft owns after buying Activision. And I'm going to hit the big ones here. Call of Duty, Crash Bandicoot, Diablo, uh, Guitar Hero, Gun, Hearthstone, Heretic, Heroes of the Storm, Hexen, uh, King's Quest, The Lost Vikings, Overwatch, uh, Pitfall, Prototype, SWAT, Singularity, Skylander, Soldier of Fortune, Space Quest, Spyro, uh, Starcraft, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, True Crime, Warcraft, World of Warcraft, and Zork. All of those are from Activision Blizzard. Um, we have a lot of... Uh, King, which is the uh, mobile game. So there's a whole slew of those. And then, of course, from mm -hmm. Bethesda, you have Dishonored, Doom, Deathloop, Elder Scrolls, Fallout, Hi-Fi Rush, Prey, Quake, Rage, Starfield, The Evil Within, Wolfenstein. And then, of course, Xbox, Microsoft owns Age of Empires, Age of Mythology, Banjo-Kazooie, Battletoads, Conquer. Crackdown, Crimson Skies, Fable, Gears of War, Forza, Halo, Killer Instinct, um, Minecraft, Perfect Dark, Pillars of Eternity, um, Psychonauts, um, State of Decay, Zoo Tycoon, Viva Pinata, and the list goes on and on there. So, Effectively, Microsoft has cornered the market here, and I think this is going to put them dangerously close to where um, Disney currently resides, where they can't acquire yeah. any more pro projects well, or. When do properties. we label them as a monopoly? They've, dude, Microsoft has acquired over two hundred and twenty-five companies. Oh god! So here's what I'm not mad at, because kind of like Disney, mm -hmm. Sony's going to have to stony up. up. Yeah. <laughs> and I knew they did it. With Disney. <laughs> yeah. They made them. Yeah. It's going to happen here. They're going to have to. They're going to have to come to the table. Yes. There's no option. Yeah. So on, on the heels of this, we also have a Microsoft Nintendo deal that happened, I think, a year or two ago at this point, where there was talks of getting the game uh, Xbox Game Pass on Nintendo consoles by allowing Nintendo to actively use Microsoft servers to conduct business, multiplayer experiences, et cetera, et cetera. So with that being said, they've already got Nintendo on board, at least to some degree there. Um, a lot of people are looking at this as a negative, of course, right? Because Microsoft owning this much, they could effectively shut down the ability to release any of these games on any other console other than Xbox. But... I personally feel like that they're trying to use this as a way to expand their um, accessibility to the Game Pass because consoles are loss leaders. They're releasing them at a loss so that people will buy those and then effectively buy software that is associated with them. I personally feel like Microsoft is trying to get out of the console market, especially since technology is almost plateaued. Like, we're almost at photorealistic graphics. That's going to be mm -hmm. the plateau until something else happens. So I think Microsoft is recognizing this now, and they're trying to make efforts to get out of the console market and to get into the, um, get into the uh, you know, streaming market and be the Netflix of video games. Garbo... You being a PlayStation owner, and this extends to Corey as well, you guys being PlayStation owners, like, there's been talks of, like, potentially, like, Starfield, for example, didn't get released to PlayStation consoles. What are your guys' feelings on this acquisition and what could potentially come from something like this? So, like, with Microsoft cornering the market here and, and pulling all of these properties and these franchises in, they have the ability to completely shut down like the releases, I'd go bye bye. 
Yeah, on on a lot from of PlayStation. From PlayStation. Right. Okay. They've already pulled Skyrim. Bethesda games. Yeah. Whoa. Like Starfield only released on Xbox and PC. Yeah. Uh, I think what they're going to do is they're either going to force PlayStation to do something similar with any IP they could snatch up or force it to allow Game Pass to be played on the PlayStation. Yeah. Yeah. Which it honestly isn't a bad thing to do. I think if PlayStation uh-huh. could make a decent deal with Xbox, they both stand to make a lot of money here. Well, they yeah, bow was... out with the console. They're like, look, we won't make another console. Mm-hmm. You can have that. But, but you need our Microsoft. games. Because look, I dude, just... I ain't trying to pay $70 to play that multiplayer, but I might pay 10 for that Game Pass to play it. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. Exactly. I just said, I don't think Microsoft would be trying to like, Take games away, but I mean, I get what y'all are saying. Oh, they're going strong arm. I mean, they're. They, I mean, they got their own exclusives already that make them like where they are, and they are more willing to make deals than Sony. If anybody would sure. be the the one that's like, you know, in that mindset, it would be Sony. Oh, they're gonna hold out. Yeah, but they can't but, lose COD. Oh no, yeah. and they won't. If it comes down to that, that's when they'll bend the knee. That's what happened. The same thing like with Spider Man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll work with you. With me. Yeah. Well, I mean, and this is kind of at a very interesting mo- uh, time period too here because like they've they've told Sony we'll release COD on Sony consoles for ten years. I would say that the lifespan of the new generation consoles that released is around eight to ten years. Mm-hmm. That give that gives Microsoft eight to ten years to work with Sony to try to iron out some type of a deal. Because we saw during all of the stuff that was released during all of this debacle with the courts and everything that Microsoft is looking at pulling in things that people would not normally play games on as ways to allow people to play games on. So they want to make like a fire stick thing that Microsoft puts out for streaming games and also streaming um TV, movies, things like that. Uh, They're also looking at maybe making another version of the current generation Xbox with a couple of hardware upgrades, but nothing super fancy. They're also looking at making possibly a tablet or something like that that has Mm. a little bit of a larger screen for like a mobile gaming experience more akin to something. Yeah, something akin to the Switch. So I don't think that Microsoft wants to spend money on developing consoles anymore. I'll take your up. And this, I mean, a lot of people see this as a negative, but me wow. as an unbiased person, I see this as a win, 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 because if I can pay $10 a month and have access to all of these games at my fingertip, fingertips whenever I want them, and then also have the ability to possibly play some Nintendo properties in the future or some Ooh. Sony properties in the future, why would I not do that? I would love that man to be able to play some Mario games. Yeah. Imagine yeah, playing the new Zelda game on PlayStation. Yep. Yeah. I would just like to play the old Zelda song. Sony will be in the My here's my question. This is this is to 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 everybody here. In response to this, I know that Sony has already snatched up a couple of gaming studios in response to uh, Microsoft acquiring Activision Blizzard. Do you think that they are going to try to make something competitive with what Microsoft already has access to? So do you think that they're going to try to develop their own version of COD, their own version like counterplay? of yeah. Elder Scrolls, their own version of Fallout? Like, Do you feel that they're going to try to do that before coming to the table? Or do you think that they see the writing on the wall and they're like, hey man, we can get in good now and make some deals start to happen? They're not going to be Let's, COD or Elder Scrolls. Yeah, I think if they're smart, I mean, they're going to just, you know, they're going to be like, yeah, let's do this. Because we'll work with you. they, Sony tried to do their own version of Halo back in the day, Killzone, yeah, and I it remember. didn't go very well. Yeah. I'm trying to do their own version of Discord, too, so. <laughs> and did it go very well? No. No. I think this. I think Sony is going to bank on continuing to release consoles. And I think that we're finally yeah. getting to that point now where 
the next console generation that's released is probably going to be the last console generation that's going to be released for quite a while. Like technology. Proof. Exactly. Technology has progressed so far in the last 10 years, but we're almost at that capstone and unless something crazy comes out. Photorealistic graphics and having access to photorealistic graphics on anything that you're playing on is the final step. Epic has that. Exactly. That's so we're the, we're getting there. I, I don't see this as a negative. Like I said, I know a lot of people do, and I know that a lot of like Sony um users missed out on Starfield and, and a lot of those people want to play it. And I do feel that at some point they will bring it over. Once the hype for Starfield starts to die off, they'll bring it over to PlayStation so that they can get a second wind out of it. That you know, of course, business that makes sense, but like I don't think that Microsoft is intentionally cornering the market to withhold players from having access, especially when Sony owns single-handedly 50% of the market. Mm -hmm. Well, if you think about it too, man, like they're going to win the console war. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. They got it. Yeah. Like they're Blu-ray player. Okay. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Looks better. I, th I think, I think that, that's why Xbox did what they did because they know Sony was winning that. Yeah. I think that in 10 years, we're going to have the PlayStation, whatever is going to be, is basically going to be a gaming PC. You're going to have yeah. the crazy random Nintendo console that's released that has all of those first party Nintendo games. And then everybody is going to be playing cross play, cross progression, the whole nine yards on one possibly two different game streaming services. Yep. Well, you can play it on a phone because it's going to run off the servers. Exactly. You don't need much. Yeah. It's really going to help them. Like, yeah. Overall it is. Be a raspberry Pi in there. Yeah. That they sell for $700, you know? Right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and it's wild how we've, tr we've seen this attempted in the past with, with Ac uh, not Activision, but Amazon yeah. doing their their version of it. Google tried to do their version of it, and they just didn't have the umph. They didn't have the the backbone that they needed to do something like that. Whereas Microsoft has the servers. Microsoft has the technology. Microsoft has the games. They have everything that you need. I, mm -hmm. If I could go to Walmart and spend sixty or seventy bucks on a one month trial to Game Pass a controller and a stick that plugs into my HDMI yeah. port, a fire stick. If I'm on vacation, I would sacrifice 60 bucks to be able to do that and play whatever I want to play. Yeah. I think that in the future, the PlayStation is going to have keyboard and mouse support with this stuff. Yes. Cause there's some games you're just going to need it. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it'd be stupid for them to not do it. Yeah, yeah Absolutely. So yeah, I think I think overall, like a lot of people view this as a negative. I think that this is going to push the industry forward at the end of the yeah. day. And it unfortunately causes you know people to respond to these situations and it causes people to buy up large properties to be able to push the because let's face it, the gaming sphere has been stagnant for the past five years. Very so snooze fast. Yes. So this is going to push everything forward. This is going to push the market forward as a whole. And it makes me excited as a consumer that does, doesn't have a bias here. It makes me excited for the future. I don't want to have to drop two grand on a gaming computer when I can buy a console. Yeah. They'll do all 400 that. bucks. Yeah. Exactly. That's exactly. awesome. Yeah. Or a fucking switch. Exactly. I mean, Dock it. That, that's You're the in. dream. Yeah. Take it everywhere. The world at Here your fingertips. Play iPad. Games. You got a bigger screen. It won't be an iPad. It'll be a uh, what's Surface. That? That's it. Surface Pro. Yeah. Great display. But I mean, they could work something out with Apple too. Like, you know what I mean? They might have to come to the table. Yeah, for sure. So we'll see what. And you already have Netflix kind of dipping their toes because oh, they yeah. have. The gaming, the game streaming stuff on Netflix as well. So they're kind of dipping their toes into it, but I don't know if they're going to have as much success as Sony they or Microsoft. Yeah, for sure. So 
So I, I see this as a huge dub all the way around. I know a lot of people aren't going to view it that way, but this is going to cause Sony to react in a massive way. And because of Sony's reaction, it's going to cause better properties to be released. And eventually it's going to possibly net it to where anybody can play anything they want, regardless of what they're playing on. It's going to come down to controller choice for real at that point. I mean, their hands are tied. Sony's going to have to make the next My hands move. Are tied. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, we'll see how this shakes out. But as of right now, don't see a negative. And like I said, Microsoft has put them in a position to where if they really wanted to strong arm Sony, they could. And oh, that yeah. is that because when Starfield released, sales for the current generation Xbox went up over 1,000%. Mm. Yeah. Whoa. That should scare Sony by itself. Imagine if yeah. the Elder Scrolls releases and it's not on a Sony console. Because oh. they oh, got COD, but they haven't promised them. Yeah. And they, I'm sure there's some fine print where they could take that back if they mm. want to. They could be like, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. We've changed our mind. Yeah. I'm sure. But they're being nice. They're being smart. Yeah. yeah. They got to do it nice. <laughs> no, dude. They know this thing makes money. We're calling love you it. a bone. Yeah. Let's go play Call of Duty. Call of Booty. For 10 years. Yeah. But after that, uh uh uh. Didn't say the magic word. But yeah. We'll see how this shakes out.